must have been really tired because I don't even remember falling asleep. But as I began to dream, I found myself in a lovely garden surrounded by the sweetness of flowers and the charming chatter of songbirds. The air was soft and warm as rays of sunlight filtered through the trees. It was near a broad wooded area and I could hear the lazy, rippling movement of water nearby. Hearing a sound to my left, I turned and saw a figure coming out of the woods and moving toward me. Even at that distance, I could see that it was an angel. He was tall and imposing, and he had a wonderfully graceful and elegant bearing and dark hair curling to his shoulders. He was dressed somewhat like a Roman centurion, and he carried a shield and a long sword which hung from a belt around his waist and he had shimmering wings that were surrounded by a soft radiance. Stopping about three feet from me, he smiled and began to speak. He called me by my name and said that he'd come to assist me. He explained that he'd reviewed my personal history and was aware of my lifelong struggle to unravel the great mystery of life and my desire to discover some universal, eternal truths that would help give structure and meaning to my life. He said that he'd been sent to assist me in that worthy pursuit. I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know what to say. Though his presence was commanding, his voice and manner were warm and reassuring, and whatever apprehension I initially felt began to melt away. His sincerity and gentle manner put me at ease. The kind of ease you only have with someone of long acquaintance, with someone who knows you well and has your best interest at heart. His name, he said, was Juma. I have been sent to help you to find some spiritual and intellectual peace, and to that end, should you agree, I would be willing to guide you back to the point of creation where you may learn for yourself the reality of the great mystery of life. Along the way, I am sure that you will find much to interest and enlighten you. I must warn you, however, that this kind of journey is long and difficult, and it is not for the faint of heart, nor is it without peril. But if your quest for the truth is genuine, if you are strong enough to accept the truth as you find it, then I am at your service. If, however, you cannot deal with what awaits you, if your courage should fail you, then you may not return at all. Not returning at all certainly got my attention. But his offer excited me, and I was intrigued by its possibilities. I stood quietly for a moment and looked deeply into his eyes, and my heart opened to this mystical stranger. Impulsively, without further reflection, I accepted his generous offer. He smiled approvingly, and we embraced, sealing our pact. He asked me to give him my trust, to put myself completely in his hands, and he would see me through. I swore my trust, and he took me by the hand, and we rose, slowly at first, out over the Monongahela River, above the Allegheny Mountains, through the clouds, and into Earth's upper atmosphere. At that point, we began to accelerate so quickly that I momentarily lost my breath. I have a strong fear of both great heights and great speed, which I didn't think to mention before we lifted off. Sensing my panic, he told me to relax and to breathe deeply and that I would be fine. His calming words and gentle touch were reassuring, and I gradually began to relax. Before long, we had reached the outer limits of Earth's gravitational pull, 
Escaping its restrictive embrace wasn't as difficult as I had feared. In fact, it wasn't difficult at all, and I felt an exhilarating sense of personal liberation. Once free, we caught the solar jet stream, and we were on our way. Intrepid voyagers on a great ocean of space and time. The grand adventure had begun. Thank mm -hmm. you.